Good afternoon, YouTube. Uh, Big Star 1000 with um, Gimme 10, 1977. And can I just say right off the bat how challenging these Gimme 10 was? <laughs> it was just um, the most, I think, the most challenging so far due to the volume of fantastic records. And I have a, a crate full next to me, uh, which 10 of them will be in this video and then right after this video I'll make another one which is Revolutions number 51 and will be devoted entirely to um, 1977 and how good the year was and I'll, um, I'll uh, give some shout outs to some, uh, to some new YouTubers if I, if I remember to, to do that. Thank you for making video responses to 1976. It was fun to watch and fun to do. Um, so without further ado, because I don't want to spend five hours talking about blah, 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 I'd like to um, start 10 records from 1977. Number one, without question, the best album of 1977, without question, in my opinion is Marky Moon by uh, Television. Uh, that is a stellar record. Um, I was speechless the day I discovered this record because nothing sounds like it. Nothing. Uh, my personal experience with uh, Marky Moon, uh, the first time I heard the name Marky Moon was in reference um, to of his latest album by U2. Because I was uh, I, I, I explaining through your videos that um, I was uh, I was I've, I've been a, a big U2 fan since I was a, a teenager and I used to read interviews and you know read about them and they, they would often quote Marky Moon as a as a major inspiration it always intrigued me and uh, in the late 90s I'm guessing 99 around 99 I got a compilation uh, with the title track Marky Moon on it and um, I just thought this is just extraordinary that music like this is ma it was made it's, it's, and it's classified as punk but it really isn't punk it's really art rock a really fine fine version of art rock it's not punk I mean uh, and every song Every song is a winner on this. It's just a, a sensational album. So if you don't know, they're from New York. Uh, they're fronted by Tom Verlaine. Uh, and um, uh, the other guitar player was uh, Richard Lloyd. Tom Verlaine was a, a very good friend of uh, Richard Hell as well. Fred Smith on bass and Bill Fickett on drums. This is an Australian first press, I believe. I also have the... The little version of it, which has got a uh, little John and Jewel on it, which is a great song. Both worth having, actually. Uh, Marky Moon Television. And uh, if I'm going to pick a sort of a second best album of 77, in my opinion, uh, it's going to be <laughs> Pink Flag by Wire. A totally essential record in every way. Uh, Pink Flag is um, the debut album by um, London band Wire, fronted by Colin Newman. Um, very short songs, you know, this is art punk at its finest. It's almost already post-punk by the time you... you and uh, but at the time you, you, you could buy HMV for three pints, three pounds 85, <laughs> which... Is not what I paid for it, let me tell you that. 1977, and if you want to sample any songs, you know, you've got uh, Three Girl Roomba, which is was basically stolen by Elastica, uh, X Lion Tamer, Lowdown, um, what else? Mannequin is great. Um, there's some great, great songs on this, you know. Uh, so, um, a fabulous punk records, but really ahead of its time. Like very, very short songs, very, you know, very arty. Um, not staying on punk, but nonetheless, 
absolutely essential is uh, Animals by Pink Floyd. I would say currently my favorite Pink Floyd record is Animals, currently. Uh, this is the one that I play the most, that I enjoy the most. Um, I used to live right there, right uh, across this uh, Battersea Power Station. I used to go on the train and see it every day when I lived in London. Uh, so I have a sort of sentimental attachment to this sleeve. Um, this is really a dark, brooding, you know, it record. It, it really is so um, captivating, the, the atmosphere. It creates a real atmosphere, which no other Pink Floyd record sort of manages to do. It's oppressive and it's, you know, you feel, you know, you think you feel like a caged animal when you listen to it. Um, uh, Pink Floyd Animals is the, the third record on this list. The first five records are no-brainers, basically, and the last five are taking me a bit more time. Uh, number four on this list, uh, I would have to say, is the essential um, Trans Europe Express by uh, Kraftwerk, which is one of my all-time favorite bands, really. And I don't think they've made a better record than this, really. I mean, uh, it's I can't see that they've topped this at all. Every song is just pitch perfect. From uh, Europe Endless to um, you know Showroom Dummies, uh, title track is amazing. Uh, metal on metal, uh, French shoe, but is just this. This is a great record. This is a an American pressing on Capitol, probably original of the time, but not the original German. But uh, I, you know, so if you never heard of Kraftwerk, a German band. Uh, from Düsseldorf and um, really one of the most essential groups, electronic music groups of all time, the, the most influential electronic band of all time, really. Number five on this list, uh, Low by Bowie. Now, Bowie's released two records in 1977, Low and Heroes, which are part of his Berlin trilogy. If you haven't uh, heard about the famous Berlin trilogy. And um, this is really a very high watermark in Bowie's career. It's um, my three favorite albums are the 70s records, Low. Station to Station, which is which was featured in 1976, and also Hunky Dory, which was featured in 1971, to me represents the best of Bowie. And this uh, is very much inspired by crowd rock, uh, ambient music. Uh, just listen to Warsaw, Warsaw, track number eight. You, you can see it's Bowie and Eno just going ambient together. It's very crowd rock esque. Um, yeah, this is a, a sublime record, really atmospheric, um, you know, sort of steeped in in crat rock and and German music, and you know, for good reason. I'm having a sip of my co coffee, if you don't mind. Okay, next five more. Um, all right, now. Very influential records. Uh, the Clash debut album. This, I believe, is the American version, which uh, there's two versions. I think the American version is the one, the one to go for. Um, the debut record, very, very influential album. Um, launched a thousand bands, I would think. Um, with songs like White Riot, Complete Control, uh, my personal favorite, White Man in Hammersmith uh, Palais, I Fought the Law, which is the um, the cover, uh, Jenny Jones, oh, just every song, Polis and Thieves, which is the uh, Junior Mervyn cover, uh, Jail Guitar Doors, which is fantastic, Garage Land, 
every song there is it's like a punk manifesto really it's uh, uh, Mick Jones, Paul Simon and uh, uh, Joe Strama three real um, visionaries I guess of The Clash uh, band from London um, from New York Massively essential album as well. Suicide, the debut record. Uh, sadly departed Alan Vega, who died about uh, a month ago. So, I mean, this is a repress, as you can see. Love to get an original of this, but, you know, I'm not in a hurry or anything. Got this on CD, too. Uh, Suicide, uh, band from New York. Two-piece, um, Alan Vega on vocals. Kind of like a psychotic Elvis kind of, you know, uh, vocalist, it's kind of really sort of, you know, yeah, psychotic Elvis is, is how I would describe him. And uh, Martin Rev on uh, electronics, that is keyboards basically, and drum machine. And uh, if you listen to Thurston Moore from Sonic Youth, they'll tell you, he'll tell you that they were the loudest band he's ever seen. They're very, very loud. And uh, Alan Vega would often come out welding chains, you know. And scaring the audience, and the audience would have departed the building before the gig was finished. Uh, suicide. Frankie Teardrop is, I think, the key song. Ghost Rider, the opener, obviously, and Rocket USA, Keep Your Dreams. But yeah, Frankie Teardrop is this sort of, yeah, psychotic kind of um, song about Johnny, uh, Frankie, who, you know, loses his job and goes crazy. It's, yeah. It's frightening. Another great punk record from um, from America, uh, Lost for Life, Iggy Pop, uh, which is uh, it's it's on the turntable, which is why it's <laughs> floppy. <laughs> it's, I left it there. Um, a great, great record. Um, obviously, everybody knows Lost for Life and um, you know, the Passenger. But the rest of the record is completely essential too. Uh, features Carlos Salama, who plays on uh, low as well. Uh, David Bowie on vocals and uh, produced and recorded by David Bowie. And I think on this tour, David Bowie played keyboards for uh, Iggy. Uh, well, look, look at this. I just love the cover shot of this. He, he looks so, you know, happy and... Um, earnest and and sensitive and nice and in fact he's kind of a beast right um two more i couldn't ignore this record i tried and tried and tried and tried not to include another brian Eno record but i have to say i've always maintained forever and ever my my top three musicians in no particular or oh well actually Serge Gainsbourg, the French genius, is number one. Brian Eno and Miles Davis are my three favorite musicians of all time. It hasn't really changed for a long, you know, for a long, long time. I would still maintain, and there's a very good reason why Brian Eno is one of my favorite musicians, it's because he's bloody good. <laughs> and for years and years, I listened to Before and After Signs nonstop, literally, and I couldn't see a list of '77 without this record on. It really is a, it's. Just a perfect record. I would I would classify this as a perfect record. Now, whilst at the moment taking Tiger Mountain by strategy is my favorite Eno of the moment, I could quite easily switch to back to before and after sounds. I played this twice this week, and I thought to myself, yeah, this is a great record. Um, and there's not a bad song on it. I mean, obviously the 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 opener, uh, no one's re receiving in Backwater. It's a great song. The uh, tribute to Talking Heads, King Z Hat, which is uh, an anagram of Talking Heads, in case you didn't know, is, is a great sort of pastiche song of the Talking Heads, who released their first album in 1977. We'll talk about that in Revolutions. Here he comes. My favorite, favorite song is By This River, uh, which is a delicate ballad uh, featuring uh, Mobius and Rodilius from Cluster. And um, 
I saw this movie years ago, um, The Sun's Room, Italian movie by Nanni Moretti. And it's a very, very sad story. And the song appears at one of the most touching moments. And ever since, it's been one of my favorite songs. It's just used in the movie perfectly. This record features, in no, um, in no particular order, uh, Phil Collins, uh, Yaki Libertide from Cannes. Uh, it features Dave Mattox. It, it, it features um, Rogius, uh, Rodelius and Mobius from Fred Frith from uh, Henry Cow. Uh, Bill McCormick from um, the Ben Quiet Sun. Like, it's a real who's who. Fantastic. Now, the last record, I was really, really, really torn between... Because I really wanted to include Asia by Steely Dan. Because I love Asia by Steely Dan. And I just really wanted it to be there. But in the end... In the end... Dennis Wilson won the, won the battle. Um, this is the last record, which is always the mystery record in my list. Uh, Pacific Ocean Blue masterpiece masterpiece of singer songwriter west coast okay i'm gonna i want to make a big statement here this is the best beach boy record in my opinion <laughs> but this guy i don't really like beach boys uh record in the first i mean i'm not really a big fan of the beach boys that's not my thing but this really it's just you know uh, the river song pacific ocean blue it's got this sort of dark atmosphere it's a bit like the pink Floyd record when you when you listen to it, it, it just takes you into a a universe of its own. It's dark, dark. Uh, Dennis Wilson, Pacific Ocean Blue, magical, magical re release by Dennis Wilson. He, he really nailed it on this. This is the triple LP repress on Sundays, which at the time cost a fortune. Probably does still does, and has. Not only Pacific Ocean Blue, but it's got uh, Caribou Sessions uh, and and Bamboo, uh, which three albums for the for one. And yes, this is the eleventh record. I wanted this in, but there's just too much quality. I just can't justify it. Uh, still is in Asia. So now I'm going to film. Uh, the revolutions with the rest of the of the box there. I hope you enjoy this installment that I haven't babbled for too long. And if I have, you know, you can fast forward me. You know what to do. Um, and um, I hope you maybe you've discovered something, or you've you know you agree with me, or you disagree. Yes. So uh, I'm looking forward to your responses. Uh, YouTube, PC.